folks, today I'd like to take a casual peek into the DC Universe Classics Vigilante action figure. This is figure number 4 from Wave 8, which contains the Giganta Collect and Connect figure for the Wave. I believe this figure was released in 2009. The copyright date on this package says 2008, but I don't think it was released that early. I, it may have been early 2009. Uh, but I didn't uh, buy this figure until early 2010. I think it was uh, back in February, end of February. Uh, Target uh, was doing a uh, reset and uh, this was part of their refresh uh, case of uh, DC Universe Classics figures. I ended up paying about $12.99 for this figure. I, that was b before it uh, went up to $15.00. Uh, which is the current price for DC uh, Universe Classics. As you can see here, uh, Vigilante, he's got uh, quite a few weapons. He's armed to the teeth. He's got this rifle here. A, a mini Uzi, I believe. Uh, looks like an Uzi, uh, but a tiny one. And he even has a pistol in his holster there. It's kind of neat. Uh, I normally don't notice the designs on the clear packaging, uh, but this one kind of stood out. Uh, this one has quite a few uh, target reticles uh, throughout the packaging. It's kind of neat. Uh, this just kind of uh, stand out, stands out for me. And down below you can see the, uh, I believe it's a leg of uh, Giganta. It's the left leg of Giganta. Taking a look at the back of the package. You can see uh, the other figures from Wave 8. Uh, we have Commander Steel, Dr. Fate, Mr. Terrific, Vigilante, Parademon, Gentleman Ghost, and Hawk Girl. Uh, the variants uh, for this wave are Dr. Fate. Uh, he comes in a more modern uh, costume, uh, a goldish color, I believe. And Parademon, which I really don't consider a, as a variant. I think it's uh, totally different design altogether so I don't consider it a variant figure but the the other parademon is a green parademon and this one here is of course red so taking a look down below you can see the biography and statistics for Vigilante I believe uh, he was a Marv Wolfman uh, creation um, I think it is. Uh, his uh, first appearance is back in 82 of the New Teen Titans, so I'm guessing he's a Wolfman uh, creation. So let's go ahead and uh, open uh, this guy out of the package, and we'll be right back. Alright, uh, we're back and we have Vigilante out of the package. And the first thing we'll take a look at is the Collect and Connect piece, which comes with uh, Vigilante. And that is the left leg of Giganta. Uh, it's a nice uh, shapely leg, uh, much different than the standard female legs uh, where they tend to be a bit scrawny. This one's uh, actually got some uh, form and definition. I don't know if it's because of the larger size or, uh, or it's just uh, sculpted differently, but... Uh, a lot better leg than um, most of the uh, female figures uh, that I've seen so far. So, and uh, there's nothing on the the leg other than the, the bracer here uh, at the ankle. And unfortunately, there's no ankle pivot on this. You would think uh, that a figure uh, this large would have ankle pivot, but uh, does not. And there you can see how tall uh, Giganta will be uh, once she's uh, finally assembled. You can see that uh, it's quite tall leg, uh, almost as tall as Vigilante himself. So, But this is the uh, left leg of uh, Giganta on there. And let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Vigilante here. And... Uh, there's just something about simple costumes that really catch the eye. Uh, overly complicated costumes, I don't know. For me, uh, I don't really notice uh, details. Maybe there's just too much stuff to, to take in. But 
me personally, I really like simple uh, costumes, and uh, and this is a pretty simple costume. Uh, you basically just have these uh, lines here uh, at, at the legs and arms and at the shoulders, uh, but that's about it, and it's just plain black. And uh, it's actually uh, just the combination of the colors and the lines uh, make it uh, eye-popping uh, for a simple costume. Actually, this does remind me of Nightwing's uh, uh, upper torso here with this uh, point on there. But um, I just really like simple designs and costumes. I just, uh, if used uh, efficiently, it looks uh, really, really nice. Uh, you can see, uh, take a look at uh, at the head here, it's actually kind of neat. Uh, he's wearing some goggles, and there is uh, it, the goggles are actually translucent, uh, but you really still can't see uh, too much uh, beyond the goggles. I can't even really tell if they're sculpted eyes or not. Uh, there's something in there. Uh, you can see something in there, but I, you can't see clearly what it is. But it's kind of a neat touch that they added this uh, translucent uh, eyewear there. It's, uh, they could have just painted it, but they didn't, so that's kind of neat. Uh, I did notice, though, the head does look a little small compared to the rest of the figure. Uh, maybe just me, I don't know, but uh, it just looks a little smaller, especially from the side on view uh, on there. So I wish his head was a little larger, but uh, that's okay. And he's got the uh, these weapons here. He's got this uh, mini Uzi or machine pistol. I don't know what this is. Uh, it looks like an Uzi, but on a lot smaller scale. It just looks like a tiny Uzi on there. And you can see I left the elastic band on there. I just it came uh, him uh, packing this pistol, and I wanted to keep it uh, that way. I didn't want to remove it in case it fell off. I just think it's kind of neat. Uh, but the only problem with the elastic band on here, it looks like uh, it's on so tight that the grip here or the clip where the clip goes uh, is bending uh, to its right. You can see the, I don't know if you can see it too well, but yeah, here's the pistol uh, head on and you can see the bottom of the clip is bending out this way. So I think the elastic band is pulling on it a little bit there. And then he also comes with this pistol, which he grips nicely. There's no elastic band on this one. And uh, that looks like some variation of an M16. It's got a scope on here. It's kind of neat. It's got lots of sculpted detail. It even has this uh, strap here, which is not, um, it's pretty rigid. It's not uh, loose, so it's preformed, you could say, on there. Got the ammunition uh, clip there. And the tip of the uh, rifle here was a little bent out of shape uh, when I got it out of the packaging. Uh, but it looks like uh, it's, uh, I bent it back okay. And uh, it's made of a softer plastic on there so it's easily uh, bendable. And he also comes with the pistol. Just kind of neat. It's in the holster. And uh, oops, looks like mine is bent here. Hopefully I can bend that back into shape. Yeah, it looks like it turned out well. And it looks like it's just a uh, revolver type pistol on there. Kind of neat. It's got a blue handle on both sides. Really, really nice. And uh, it looks like uh, in the DC Universe, uh, weapons manufacturers is a company called China on there. Because it seems to be on all of the weaponry on there. So I guess China is a major manufacturer of uh, weapons in the DC Universe. Let's go ahead and put that back in there. And you can see the belt, details on the belt. It's got these pa pouches here. I'm not sure if that's some sort of device on the, in the middle there, just a buckle maybe. I'm not sure what that is, maybe an ammo clip or something. And uh, you got more pouches in the back. And what's really cool are a pair of nunchucks that are in there. And I wish that was a separate uh, piece of weaponry, but it's just sculpted into the belt there. But it's still kind of neat that they did that. It's really, really cool. And there's some more detail in the boot over here. It's a very nice figure. I really like this figure. Uh, and just a uh, really nice design. That's a very simple yet effective design. 
Uh, going over the articulation, uh, the head does go all the way around. It does go up. Oops, let me uh, hold on to it. It does go up and down. Oh, uh, one, one more detail on the face. You can actually see uh, the cloth mask. Uh, you see some of the sculpted details on the nose. Uh, you can of the cloth mask going over the nose, which is really really cool, and also some of the ears on there. Uh, continuing with the articulation, the arms do go all the way around, and they do go out and in. Uh, the biceps uh, go all the way around. Oh, uh, one thing I've got to note: uh, one thing that's uh, kind of a miss is that the line on the arms. This one's okay. Uh, tend to line up, but this one here, not so well. So, but uh, the biceps do go all the way around. The elbows do bend. Uh, no articulation at the forearm, but there is articulation at the wrist on there. The torso uh, bends back quite a bit uh, and forward uh, quite a ways. Uh, the waist does go all the way around. Uh, the legs at the joints uh, are the typical DC Universe uh, joints, so they go up, down, to the back, and out to the side, even with the pistol here. And there, uh, there is a uh, rotation all the way around at the thigh, uh, bends at the knee at a single joint, and uh, bends at the feet at the ankle. And uh, there is a tiny bit of ankle pivot on there, so... Uh, overall, I really love this figure. Uh, it's just, it's just the simplicity in the design and and the effective use of the details that uh, just make this figure really stand out. And I just uh, like this uh, like this figure overall. Uh, if you can find him, uh, go ahead and pick him up. He's no longer available in retail. I bought this figure earlier in the year uh, toward the tail end of when this figure was released so uh, if you're gonna find them he's probably on eBay or um, a specialty shop so I uh, definitely uh, recommend uh, for picking this guy up so this is my casual peek into the DC Universe Classics uh, Vigilante action figure uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time Oh, 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 oh,